Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She said. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good. This one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket, and I'm not going to pay for it. Who says you're not going to pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What do you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Cassandra Mustang is suing Robin Hines in the amount of $750. Ms. Mustang claims she gave Ms. Hines 10 silver dollars as collateral for a small loan, but says the defendant used the coins to pay for a pizza. Ms. Hines claims it was just 10 of the $20 Ms. Mustang borrowed and says she was entitled to use the coins based on the outstanding debt of the plaintiff. In the matter of Cassandra Mustang versus Robin Hines, I am advised that you loaned or you borrowed some money from the defendant, gave her some silver dollars as collateral, went back to get them, and the silver dollars had been spent by the defendant. Is that right? Yes, that is correct, Your Honor. And now you want her to pay you the full value of those silver dollars, which is $750? Yes. Okay, let me hear your story. Ms. Hines is my former friend. Who are all these friends? I tell you. <laughs> Yeah, um, I definitely learned my lesson, and uh, pretty much we met our freshman year in college. She's always been a very lackadaisical type of person. You know, me, I'm very by the book, logical, very organized, and we kind of became friends because, you know, she was the yin to my yang. You know, we got along very well, and she showed me the ropes on campus. I was new, and I wasn't really much of a social butterfly. And, um, you know, there was a lot of times where there would be things disorganized on her part, and I would show her things as well. So we both, you know, grew upon each other. Um, eventually, what ended up happening is I needed to borrow some money. Now, in this Why case, are you still in college? Correct. Okay. I don't work at the moment. Um, I'm really, really focused on my studies. I do have a scholarship at school. And um, this wasn't something that I normally do. And so much so the fact that I'm a stickler when it comes to borrowing money. Unless it's an urgent, urgent thing, I don't borrow money. My parents raised me that if you don't have it, don't go somewhere else asking for it. But in this case, um, I needed to get books for school. And it was just the week before our final, so it was urgent. So pretty much, I mustered up the strength to ask her to loan me for the $20. Is she your roommate? No, she lives on a different floor in our dorm. Okay, so you asked her to loan you $20. Correct. And now, what were the terms? In this case, um, I was supposed to give it back to her no later than Monday. And what's today, Friday you were asking for this? It was Thursday. Thursday. Correct. Not the time I was actually going for the weekend to see my parents. So I did feel comfortable in the fact that I'm going to see my family. I'll be able to get the money to replace it. Um, so I knew it wouldn't be an issue. Um, but even still, because I've had issues in the past, not specifically from her, but just in general with other people, just to always write a note, especially with her too, because she's not very organized. And I felt like just to add a little extra protection, I should make a promissory note and then also offer collateral. Okay. Somebody knows how to put stuff in writing. Thank you, Jesus. Promissory note yeah. and collateral. <laughs> my, my. Yeah. And what was the collateral? Um, it was 10 silver dollar coins. That's what you gave her? Correct. And where'd you get these silver dollar coins from? Well, the silver dollar coins actually came from my grandmother. Um, she originally started a collection of coins, um, passed it down to my mom, and then I received them during my high school graduation. Oh, okay. So did you know the value of these coins? Not the exact value. Um, for me, it was more or less of a sentimental value. Uh, unfortunately, I did lose my grandmother, and so this was the last bit of, um, you know, things that I had of hers that really meant something to me emotionally. All right. So what happened? Well, <laughs> I come to the dorms early Monday morning. I figured I would beat her before she leaves out for class. Um, and I knock and knock and knock on the door. No answer. Now, we usually go out for lunch, for instance, on campus. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll see her at lunchtime. 
Didn't see her at all during lunch. So I'm like, okay, let me come back again during the evening. I come back during the evening and she answers the door like, what's going on? Like just completely out of it, right? And when I tell her, I'm like, okay, I have $20 to give you back. She says, oh no, you only have to give me 10. And then that's when she tells me that the $10 was deducted from the silver coins that she used to order pizza. Oh, so she used the collateral. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Wow. And then, well, so you only owe ten dollars. Why are we here? How do we get to seven fifty? Well, because the value of the coins was more than ten dollars. And to me, in general, like if you have a collection of coins, anyone should know that it's not the face value. The whole purpose of keeping them is to gain value over time. But why would you give someone that much collateral for twenty dollars? Absolutely, and that was a mistake that I made. I'm thinking. So why wouldn't you give her one coin? Well, I didn't know the value at all, and that was my okay, fault. Okay, so now you're saying that everyone knows that you keep coins because they have value. Well, she knew though that it was a sentimental value, and she knew that the value of the coins was more sentimental than ten dollars. Sentimental value is only sentimental value to you, the person who has the sentiment. Correct, but we have been friends for a while, though, Your Honor. She has seen okay, the collection I, in my room. Hear, I just can't understand why you, knowing that they have value, and people collect coins because the value increases. Why you would give her all of them for a twenty dollar bill? Your Honor, I'm not negating my mistake on this. Oh, okay. I'm not going to negate that. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. I thought I could get her some more coins because they're, you know, silver, silver dollar dollars. coins. Yeah. So you thought you could just go buy some more silver dollars? That's well, what you thought. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And later. And when he was opening up his new salon, I offered to sell them to him all three for. Th five thousand dollars so a huge discount justice with judge maybelline if you'll be in the los angeles area and want to bring your case to court call 1-888-552-6878 you're watching justice with judge maybelline we're back with the case of cassandra mustang who is suing robin hines for breach of contract what do you have to say mr hines you know, I was studying all weekend because, like she said, it was finals week. And I slept in Monday morning. I took all my exams. And by the time I got back, I was starving. And so I ordered a pizza for me and my friends. And I thought I had that $20 that I lent her. But, of course, she had it. So... Oh, you forgot you had loaned her the $20 you had. Yeah. So I decided... Your last $20. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so I thought, you know... I didn't know they had this great sentimental value to her, so I thought I could replace them. But you're there with your friends. So why do yeah. you ask one of them to pay hey. for it? Because all you had was her silver dollars, and you're in college, right? Yeah. Do you know the word collateral? I mean, I... You know what that, <laughs> what that means? I do now. <laughs> oh, you um, didn't know before? No, I, I was... I really, I didn't want to take the coins because... I know you didn't want to. Yeah. You didn't understand what that meant when she says, hold these coins in exchange for the $20 as collateral as my promise so you know that I'm coming back to get my coins and I'm going to pay you this $20? Well, I thought, you know, it would all even out if I used them for that and then she would only owe me $10. And so then I what? could, you know, take that to replace the silver coins. I thought she just liked collecting the coins in general, not that they were Okay, but even if she likes collecting the coins in general, once you spend them, you spend her collectible coins. I thought I could get her some more coins because they're, you know, silver, silver dollar dollars. coins. Yeah. So you thought you could just go buy some more silver dollars? Go yeah. to the bank and say, give me silver dollars in exchange for these paper dollars. That's well, what you thought? Yeah, it is, yeah. Whew. Your Honor, um, I also wanted to note Let that me, I'm give not... Give me something that says these coins were valued at seven. No, absolutely, and that's what I was just getting ready to say. I'm not suing even for the full value of what these coins were. I'm actually being fair. Specifically, one of the coins was uh, minted in 1921, my grandmother's birth year. I have a document here that shows that the value is upwards of $1,400. Um, and I also have evidence of the remaining collection and the missing pieces in that collection as well. Along well, okay, with the but promissory the remaining notes. collection and the missing pieces, are those hers? I mean, are those the ones that she spent? That's, what, that's the original certificate showing the entire collection at the time. 
And the other one that you see there is from 1986, I believe. $75. And even a, a coin from 1986 has a value of $77. And what is this? This is the all of them that you had? Correct. That looks like more than 20. Yeah. So it's been in our family for quite some time. What do you have to say? So you want her to pay you the full value, just half the value then? Well, to me, that's fair. The average comes out to about $750. Um, and at least that would provide me the opportunity to search for the coins and find a way to replace them. You're not going to find those coins. What do you have to say, Ms. Hines? You know, honestly, I am sorry that I spent them. And I, but I don't feel like... <sighs> Like, I've really done that much wrong here. This because... is what she said before. Okay. Well, this is insulting right. my intelligence. She's you not know? insulting your intelligence. She just doesn't feel like she did wrong, and I'm going to help her out and show her where you did wrong. When someone gives you something as collateral and you hold that, that is to guarantee that I will bring back what I've asked, what I've borrowed or taken from you, and you hold this until I bring it back. That's what you have to do. Right. And you're only entitled to get rid of it if the person doesn't repay when they said they are going to do it, if they break their part of the bargain, right. you acted too rapidly and you couldn't use those coins. When your mistake was, is when you accept something as collateral, right. in exchange for something you're giving to someone else, you have to hold the collateral right. until the debt is due. And if the debt is not paid, then you get to do something with the collateral. So it's a very valuable lesson. Yeah. So you learned something today. I sure did. All okay. right. College students, learn words. If you don't know the meanings of words, you should look it up. Collateral. Know what you're doing. It's a very valuable lesson to know before. Think consequences. Ask questions. Do what you do your homework, all right? So it's judgment for the plaintiff. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $750. I always take responsibility for my actions. Most importantly, I will never make the mistake again of giving away my sentimental items. I didn't give away your silver dollars on purpose, but I did learn an important lesson today about collateral and how to treat your friends. Coming up. And when he was opening up his new salon, I offered to sell them to him all three for $5,000. So a huge discount. Justice with Judge Maybelline. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Jenna French is suing Dominic Harris in the amount of $2,000. Ms. French claims Mr. Harris promised to pay her $5,000 for antique barber chairs, but she only received $2,000 and she wants the remaining balance. Mr. Harris claims the chairs were old and they had to be refurbished, so he feels the plaintiff doesn't deserve the rest of the money. In the matter of Jenna French versus Dominique Harris, I understand this is two hairstylists, um, formerly friends. You sold him some barber chairs from your salon when he opened up his own salon. Um, now he's saying that he doesn't owe you the $2,000 difference in the chairs which you sold for $5,000 uh, because they were in bad shape. Correct. And he had to spend a lot of money to get them together. Correct. Can you hear your... Uh, testimony. Uh, Your Honor, so I am suing Dominic Harris because he bought three barber style chairs off of me. Uh, these were three classic Cadillac chairs that I bought for $5,000 each. And when he was opening up his new salon, I offered to sell them to him all three for $5,000. So a huge discount. I thought I was doing him a favor. Here's three chairs. I'll save you some money. Come look at them. Yes, they might need some repairs, but here you go for $5,000. He told me he couldn't afford $5,000 right away. I asked him what he could afford. He said $3,000. So we negotiated a payment plan. Over six months, he would pay the remaining $2,000. He refuses to pay that remaining $2,000 after we agreed to that, those terms. And here we are today. Okay. Well, you said, yes, they may need some repairs. Correct. So is it a fact that they did need some repairs? They weren't in perfect condition, were they not? No, they were in perfect condition. Okay. Uh, one of the chairs had some rips on it, but it just needed to be reupholstered. Uh, the hydraulics were a little clunky, but the chairs overall still had the beautiful classic look. They were very unique. 
Do um, you have a picture of these chairs? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Because you said it was a Cadillac of chairs or the Cadillac <laughs> chair? It looks like a Cadillac. Oh. It's a good the, 60s style chair. Yeah, very unique. Not oh, the, the old kind. fashioned, the, the early uh, versions of barber chairs. All right, did you look at these chairs, Mr. Harris? Uh, I did. I did look at the chairs, Your did Honor. Did you examine them? I did. I looked them over. Um, and what did you see when you looked them over? I saw that there was a rip, which she she a rip pointed where? out on the middle of the seat. So it's a rip in the middle of the seat on one chair. What else did you notice? Um, I noticed that the hydraulics system on the chairs uh, was a little jerky. Um, what does that mean, a little jerky? It just wasn't very smooth, like the up and down. I mean, when. You know, when you have clients, they're different heights, and so you mm -hmm. need to be able to adjust the chair. So you said it wasn't very smooth, but did it go up? It did. Did it go down? It did. Coming up. I thought she misled me because she told me that it would probably cost a few hundred dollars for the repairs. Closed captioning provided by... You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Jenna French, who is suing Dominic Harris for $2,000. So what happened? So what happened was I ended up taking the chairs to a repair person who uh, further examined them and explained to me that the entire hydraulic system in each chair would have to be refurbished and that the upholstery on the one chair was going to cost almost six hundred dollars and how much would the uh, the repair of the hydraulics cost that cost about two thousand dollars when did you take them to a repair person for repairs i took them a week after i had purchased them from her so a week later after you get the chairs in your possession right you take them to for repairs yes and then did you call her and say i'm not gonna pay you I, I called her and, and I told her that the chairs were going to cost over $2,500 for the repairs and that I thought she misled me because she told me that it would probably cost a few hundred dollars for the repairs. When it turns out, it cost $2,500. Judge Maybelline's verdict when Justice with Judge Maybelline returns. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. You bought the chairs from her. You had an opportunity to look at them. We have caveat emptor. Buyer beware when you're purchasing something. You're responsible for the $2,000 judgment for the plaintiff. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $2,000. Just because you had to pay more than expected on the upholstery doesn't mean you don't have to pay me. Maybe I should have gotten an expert opinion in advance, but I still feel like I did not get a good deal on the chairs. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.